It looks like Jim Harbaugh could be heading back to the NFL. Why would now be the best time to go to the pros, Paul? Well, I think, Max, he's done all he can do uh, at, at Michigan. Uh, you know, he beat the odds. He silenced his critics. He got to the playoffs and then naturally got blown out by uh, a Southern team. And I think that would tell him that he's, he's reached his peak. He's reached, he's reached the ceiling. So this would be a good time to go. Now, what's really interesting to me is today of all days, Jim Harbaugh is reportedly interviewing with the Vikings for those who don't follow the South and, and college football, especially in this part of the country, this is the High Holy Day. This is National Signing Day Part 2. The first one was in December. And the idea that Jim Harbaugh, on one of the biggest days of the year where players are inking uh, scholarships with the University of Michigan, he's flying the coop up, up north, uh, is, is really unbelievable and inexplicable in the event that he doesn't get this job. And, and I, I, I have a hard time imagining that he wouldn't leave uh, to go up there without being assured that he has it. But for, if, some re for, if for some reason he doesn't get it, how does he walk back into that athletic department uh, tomorrow uh, make, after pretty much saying, I'm done with you guys? Yeah, Paul, what kind of impact do you think Jim Harbaugh would have on the Vikings organization if he does get that job? Well, Harry, at, at, even though I've been uh, critic number one of Harbaugh for most of his tenure at, at Michigan, because I don't think he, until this year, he has met the expectations, I think he is a very good NFL coach. Uh, we've seen that in the past, and nobody needs me to read his resume, uh, but he did go to two uh, NFC championship games and a Super Bowl. Uh, he, he's a very good offensive coach. He has developed quarterbacks, and I, I think with the Vikings, they they need a little bit of a push. I mean, they've been a good a good program, a good franchise, but just simply can't get over the hump. And I think he would give them that. Uh, he he's he's his mindset is better for the NFL game. He's quirky. Uh, he's he's very difficult sometimes to deal with, from a a 17 year old to a 58 year old uh, standpoint. Where in the NFL, it's a much different game, as, as all of you guys know. Paul, let's shift to college uh, real quick here. Now, I have to be very careful and calculated about this next topic because, you know, sometimes you know things that you shouldn't know and you don't want to spill the beans. But there's a certain quarterback in Caleb Williams, ex-quarterback of Oklahoma, who transferred to USC with his former coach at Oklahoma and Lincoln Riley. How important of a get was this for us? to get Lincoln Riley and Caleb Williams. This was a seismic shift in college football. Uh, it was that important. Uh, Lincoln Riley going there was the beginning. Uh, it was necessary. USC needed a legitimate big-time coach, and they got the biggest guy that uh, they, could, they could get their hands on. Caleb Williams is the biggest player uh, in, in, the, in the transfer portal. Had, it, had he stayed at Oklahoma, he would have probably been second or third behind Bryce Young among the Heisman favorites. So wh where in the world do you go out and get a transfer who's already a Heisman favorite? Don't tell me Georgia did that last year, but nobody really bought, bought into that uh, in the beginning. But th this uh, Caleb is, is legitimate. Uh, he is transform transformational. And I'm, I, I'm not saying that Southern Cal will win the national championship next year, Keyshawn, because they still have some, some uh, important places to fill. However, uh, what Lincoln has done, he's taken three key players from Oklahoma. He's recruiting up and down the coast. Uh, he is drawing players from all over the country. I, I think we are looking at the rise again of, of Southern Cal. I, I think Southern Cal will be in the college football playoff in a fairly short period of time. Uh, single-handedly is saving the Pac-12 conference from extinction. So uh, beyond that, I don't. I, I think I'm short on superlatives, but that's where I'll I, that's where I'll end it on this uh, Groundhog Day. Let me let me ask you this though, uh, Paul. Before we let you run, the fact that Lincoln Riley is doing what he's doing in the portal, he's grabbing guys out of the portal left and right and rebuilding the USC program. Will college coaches across the country want the NC2A to revisit the portal now because guys like Lincoln Riley can beat them not only in high school recruiting but as well as the portal? 
Well, they may want that, uh, but they're not going to be able to. Uh, th this is completely out of control on one hand, uh, Keyshawn, but, but it's really what college football asked for. And you and I both know the NCAA's power structure is, is at its weakest point in history. So coach after coach continues to use the cliche, but in this case, it's true. It is the wild, wild west. There are accusations going back and forth about what certain schools have done in buying not only a recruiting class, uh, but, it, but by going into the portal and shopping like you're, you're, you know, you're, you're a target on, on, a, on a Saturday afternoon. That, that's where we are, right? Even Nick Saban finally said enough's enough last night, saying this is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I think he was referring to what's going on at one of his SEC West rivals out in Texas, uh, because if you haven't read, Texas A&M is very likely to have the best recruiting class in the country. And even Lane Kiffin, your good friend, Key, uh, Key uh, went after Texas A&M and saying, are they going to have to pay a luxury tax? So, uh, but hey, that's what, you know, college, college football deserves what it's getting. Uh, they they want to be like the pros? Well, they have, they, have, they have surpassed the pros. At least the NFL has some some rules in, in place. Not many, but some. I want to get back to Harbaugh really quick, uh, Paul, because you have been an outspoken critic, and but you made very clear, you're not saying he's a bad coach. It's just like, there's so much you can do, and, and he was at first not even living up to the standard. He finally did part of what he needed to do, so let's get moving, right? What's next from Michigan's point of view? Like, what's Next for Michigan, and then if you if you would, what is Harbaugh's legacy there if he does leave? I think his his legacy will be better than he probably deserves, uh, Max, because of getting to the playoff this year. But you know the, the reason why I think there was so much criticism of Harbaugh was he came in uh, barking so loudly. Uh, you know he he had uh, you know he came down to, uh, to Alabama and, and did a camp. Uh, he he went to. Uh, Florida. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.